Downtowner wants to begin a new leg of the show in which we show filmmakers that uh, begin their career uh, doing short films, which is basically what every filmmaker does. We are today with uh, Freddy Rodriguez. <laughs> Okay, the way I met Freddy, the existence of Freddy, is I interviewed Luis Pais, who is part of the Shy Monster Company team duo, Hayden Blades and Luis Pais. And he told me about a movie that he was working on called Malabar. I went on HBO now. After I saw it, I said, I have to interview the guy. Tell me, where do you come from? I was born in Cuba. I grew up in Michigan. And then I moved to Miami when I was 10 years old. Michigan. Yeah, Lansing, Michigan. Cuban in Michigan. So we're the only Cubans there. There was five of us. My dad worked for General Motors. What did you do before all this? So after high school, I went to art school, uh, which is now in the Omni, but before it used to be on the Bay. In the, in the 80s, <laughs> it was called International Fine Arts College. And then after that, I went to Miami-Dade. So I studied film. And then I actually went away from film. In the 80s, um, I was a, an AIDS activist, and I was one of the co-founders of ACT UP. So I was like this militant activist. I went to go work for the largest uh, AIDS organization in Miami um, called Health Crisis Network. So I did that for many, many, many years until I was like, I need to go back to production. And I went to go work uh, at uh, $6 an hour for, uh, for a post-production facility. And then I worked at NBC for many years. You won a whole bunch of awards. You won awards on NBC? Yeah, I won 15 Emmy nominations. Okay, nothing. Seven Emmys, six Pro Max awards, and something like that. Yeah. <laughs> so I created 66 films. I'm really good friends with an artist in Fort Lauderdale. His name's Chris Lopez. He designs a lot of clothes. So since I had a commercial background, and he was beginning to launch this line of clothing, I said, let me help you. So I did this one thing that was kind of like this hybrid of a commercial music video short film hybrid next one was a short film that i did called fire and then i told him i said this is not a commercial this is a short film are you cool with it he's like nolly so your first short film was fire yeah it was kind of water was the first time i said i'm gonna produce something independently okay. you know where i don't have a brand paying me i said let's do this it was an homage to bruce weber i was gonna be a fashion photographer mm -hmm. So I worked on South Beach and I was an assistant to all the fashion photographers. So Water is an homage to Bruce Weber. It's a black and white bathing suit thing, very sexy. Like something like, like Lenny Riffen style kind of video, black and white, yeah. very artsy. Yeah, it's very romantic. It's like mommy porn. <laughs> After Fire, Malabar, or something else? Well, what happened was that it was like Water, which was independent, Fire, and Fire is when I connected with Filmgate because I submitted it to Nola, the main actor won, he won Best Actor. And then I started doing their workshops. I pitched Malabar and Deliana heard it. And then afterwards she says, I want to talk to you. I thought she was going to ask me to volunteer, clean the bathrooms. And she says, I want to help you make it. And right before that, I had done a music video and it did really, really, really well. We got into like 21 film festivals. So it was really the, it was fire, that music video. <laughs> got me kind of my feet wet and then after that I did Malabar. So tell me how did Malabar begin? Should I be looking at the camera at some point? Pretend there's an no, audience. No, sometimes no. here, sometimes there. <laughs> me and my husband were driving to Chicago and we stopped at a rest stop in Malabar, Florida. So Malabar is a place. I was like, what is Malabar? <laughs> so it's a place. We stopped there and I walked up to a billboard with all the missing people uh -huh. and there was a mom and two little kids missing. And they looked very indigenous, you know, probably Mexican or Central American. And the little kids were beat up. They had black eyes. It was a really strong thing to see. And that was, that was when the, the conversation was beginning to heat up about immigration. And, you know, they, the people, they. And you were beginning to hear bad things about those people. And since I'm gay and I came out in the 80s, that's the same thing they were saying about gay people and AIDS. It was like those people have disease and it started that whole thing. Kind of felt a uh, connection. Absolutely. So and then when we were driving to Chicago, I'm thinking about this mother and these two kids. 
The other side of that is around January, I was doing a travel video for Visit Florida. We were in Cluiston one morning, me and my producer, Monica, that works for me, Monica Lopez. You know, it's eight o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday and there's little Mexican kids everywhere. I'm assuming they're Mexican, they could be Central American, whatever. Exactly. Like, why are these kids inside a gas station? Why aren't they in school? And there was a lot of white buses. Well, those kids got in the bus and drove into the fields. And I thought to myself, wow. You know, when you think of uh, migrant labor, you think of 30-year-old men. You never think of 17-year-old, 15-year-olds. So and then I said, wow. And then I started doing research. And I found out that children work in the fields, and in, especially in Florida. And I read that one of these politicians wants to push the law to, for children to work, which is, you know, unheard of, especially in a country like this. Come on. You think that's shocking, right? It is. When you start to do the research, you read stories that are even more shocking. That's the whole thing about Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. The children were working in the mines. Now it's us here. Okay, you started 2015. Diliana heard the pitch. She helped you produce it. Tell me a little bit of how you put it together. Oh, I did a crowdfunding campaign and we raised all the money and it was great. So we were able to raise $17,000. So we had a budget and it took us eight months to cast because the talent in Miami was so good. Um, two people are not from Miami. Um, Alvaro, who plays, who plays Nathan, is actually from California. Christopher Navarro, who, who plays Ale, he is from Miami. Miles Windsor, he's from Philadelphia. He's actually one of the producers, so he's a friend of mine. The movie has two stories. One that begins the story. In a certain moment, we leave that story, which we already kind of imagine what happens, and then we go to a second story that, in a way, repeats the first one. How did you decide about this structure? I was very, very interested in using the story of undocumented family. So it was kind of like, well, what if you bring this you kind of twist the genre a little bit. So it's this family drama, but there's this core element. One of the things that we deal with with food and what the whole thing is based on is that there's this paradigm. So we just think of, oh, it's undocumented immigrants and they're migrants and they work in the fields. Well, there's a whole structure that supports all that and that's kind of like what you're talking about. One of the things that I liked a lot about the movie is that usually we talk about immigrants we talk about they, we talk about them. They're just a mass, and we need to save the country from that mass. In your film, every character not only has a name, but it's always repeated. Nathan, 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 the name of the sister. They always tell you the names so that you humanize them. You remind the audience, these are people. This might be you, in a way. Whatever you agree politically doesn't really matter in this movie. Well, this is a story about a family, and this is what happens to this family under the circumstance. I sat down with Deliana and we discussed about what was going on. I mean, Deliana says it. We want to change hearts and minds. We want the topic to be out there and think about it. I wrote Malabar in English, and then we wanted to get the language correct, so Liz Pasillas who's the co-screenwriter, took my English script. Sí, pero tú hablas español, ¿por qué no lo hiciste en español? Bueno, el español primero que yo hablo no es, no es bueno. <laughs> <laughs> yo odio, odio, because I understand Spanish well enough. Cuando tú estás mirando una película y dicen, yo soy mexicano, luce en puertorriqueño y tiene un acento de boricua. <laughs> and you're like, what kind of Mexican are you exactly? <laughs> and let's get it culturally accurate. Do you have any influence from other filmmakers? So you're a filmmaker. Do you have any influences? A lot. I love the tone and texture of Amores Perros. Mm -hmm. So shocked. I mean, it was part of that Mexican new wave. It was really hardcore. I love Steven Spielberg, early Steven Spielberg, because he delivered the goods every time. He gave you tons of subtext. When I break down Steven Spielberg movies, and I tell people Jurassic Park is really not about dinosaurs, it's about a guy discovering he becomes a father. And they're like, what? And I'm like, well, Steven Spielberg, all his movies are about father. Close Encounters, about a father. About a father. Well, he's from a divorced family. Even E.T. The father is not there, but... E.T. Exactly. wants to go home. Yeah, so all of Steven Spielberg's movies are extremely personal and heavy in subtext. But what happens? They're very accessible. You know, you're not watching Under the Skin with Scarlett Johansson, which you're like, okay, now I need to go to YouTube and just see what I just, I mean, I just saw Suspedia the other day, and I was like, okay, I need to go to YouTube now. So is this what I think it is? And I like that. I like movies that are heavy in subtext, visually pleasing, but deliver the goods, where you feel connected. Like when I teach about Stanley Kubrick, and I'm like, Stanley Kubrick had pedophilia issues. The movies are about, you know having sex with kids. And when I tell them that's what The Shining's really about, they freak out. Now, his movies aren't as accessible, but they still deliver the goods. 
Except Eyes Wide Shut. That's the one that you kind of like. Okay, and why am I watching this still? Hey, is that the movie is my favorite? No, I love. He's no. I actually study The Shining, and I watch tons of videos on it, and I try to understand. And it's The Shining is probably one of the, the most layered movies. You can get so many things out of it. I don't know it, because of our culture, we, we love horror movies. Right now, people, when you say Stanley Kubrick, people say The Shining, but actually, his masterpiece is 2001, and that's the movie that we should be talking about when we talk about Kubrick. But anyway, yeah, right now, The Shining, and especially now that in Cannes they have a new copy and all that, well, The Shining okay, is, is that, The Shining is moving up in the ladder. <laughs> okay, that was your influence. How do you think you will influence other filmmakers uh, after they watch this film? The whole point of Malabar and the, the way I had approached it was that I was at a lot of film festivals and I saw a lot of short programs and a lot of shorts. And what I saw was kind of like the same thing, which was movies that were very safe. But when we approach short film, we think of things that are easy to do because their budgets are very limited. It, might, or it could be a no budget, low budget, or you know, let's try something. And I watched enough of film festival coordinators, what they say, and they say, a short film is a special thing, it's not a feature. Fuck that. You make the movie that you want to make. The first thing they tell you is short film is kind of like a resume builder. It's a style builder. It's, it's a portfolio builder. You can't sell it. Well, we did sell it. And there are places that are looking for content. Um, so I would say to any filmmaker, you know, do what you want. How long is uh, Malabar? 17 minutes. In film festivals, they only accept 15 minutes. Cans, if you look at cans, they say 15 minutes. Okay. And don't upload it at 15. So the option is, okay, so do I sit there and cut my movie? Which I was like, no. I don't want to cut my movie, but um, I feel like I told the story that I wanted to tell. And I think that's what you need to go with. There is a platform for it, and the funny part with Malabar was that people were vested in it and they enjoyed watching, which is ultimately why we make movies, right? So now tell me about the future. What's after Malabar? A, a, a good long rest. <laughs> we never rest, filmmakers. No, 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 no. I just now that it's in HBO's hands and it's, it's there, you know, the baby's off to college and now I'm an empty nester. So now I just started writing two things that, there's been about three stories that have been in my head for several years. So now it's developing those, those things. About filmmaking in Florida. What do you want me to say? What do you think? You have to be a sustainable filmmaker. You know, that's the whole key, right? Is how do I turn this into a career where I can make a living? And I mean, right now, it's very, very challenging. And it's been challenging for several people. And it's not because of a lack of talent. And it's not because of a lack of connections. It's because it's just really hard. Um, there's not, the money isn't here. And, you know, other than Filmgate and maybe two or three organizations that I don't really know about, because I know about Filmgate, um, you know, where's the love? Where's the, where's the stuff? Well, there's a lot to talk about Malabar, but we don't have much time. Go watch it. Go to HBO now and HBO Go. You can follow us. We're on, we have a Malabar page on Facebook. Um, I'm also on Instagram and I'm constantly posting stuff. Just straight on my Instagram, not like a Malabar Instagram page. I hate that shit. Well, thank you very much. I want to know more about you. <laughs>